As we continue to look at decisions, I want to take a look at what happens if we want to make multiple decisions. Well, one good way to do that is to use else if. And to demonstrate else if for you, let's take a look at this program. The program starts by asking the user to enter the temperature outside. And that temperature is going to be stored in an integer value called temp. And then based on what the user puts in, we're going to suggest an activity to the user. We're going to use this chart to do so. So if the temperature is above 90, we want to suggest swimming. If it's 75 to 89, we want to suggest soccer, 65 to 74, football, so on and so forth. And then we're going to use the string activity to assign what activity we think the user should try. So let's see how we could write this in code. We could use a bunch of if statements and say, if the temperature is above this point, try swimming. Or if it's above this point, try basketball, chess, or whatever activity fits inside of the correct range. So if we were to set the input to 100, let's see what would happen with this code. It would reach the if statement, which would test, is the temperature greater than or equal to 90? Well, 100 is, so therefore it would be true. Then it would go inside the if statement and change activity to swimming. And what we would like it to do then is go down to the system out print line statement and say, we think you should try swimming. But unfortunately, that's not going to be the output. The output for this program would be, we think you should try skiing. And let's see why that is. Again, we'd get to the point where it's going to ask, is temperature greater than or equal to 90? And because temperature is 100, that would be true. And so activity would be changed to swimming. But the problem is, it wouldn't stop there. It would continue on to the next if statement. And 100 is greater than 75, so therefore the if statement would be true. And activity would be set to soccer. Next, 100 is greater than or equal to 65. That would also be true and activity would then be set to football. Then in the next if statement, 100 is greater than or equal to 55. That would be true. Activity would be baseball. 100 is greater than or equal to 33. True. Activity would be basketball. And then finally, 100 is greater than or equal to zero. It would be true. And therefore, activity would be set to skiing. It would check this last if statement, but 100 is not less than zero, and that would be false. Therefore, it would print the last value that activity would be, and that is skiing. So when we get to this point, it would say, we think you should try skiing. And this is certainly not what we wanted the program to do. Let's reset and try another input. Let's say instead of 100, we use 60. Well, it would have the same unfortunate results as 100. The first three test cases would be false, but the problem is the next three would be true. It would get to baseball, which is what we should be suggesting, but then it would also be true for basketball and skiing, and the output would again be, we think you should try skiing. What we really want is for the first time it finds a true statement for the code to stop there. And there's a way that we can do this using nested if-else statements. As we look at this code here, what we're doing is we're nesting an if-else statement inside of another if-else statement, inside of another if-else statement, inside of another if-else statement, so on and so forth. And the idea of nesting is simply putting one control structure inside of another. An if statement inside of an if statement, an if else inside of an if else, or multiple decision statements inside of other decision statements. Let's see how this would affect the code as opposed to just using if statements. If we use the same input as before, which is 60, and we got to the first if statement, temp is greater than or equal to 90, that would be false. Then it would execute the else statement because the if statement is false, and it would check if temp is greater than or equal to 75. That also would be false. Then it would execute that other else statement beneath it and say if temp is greater than or equal to 65. That's also false. And because it's false, it would execute the else statement and say if temp is greater than or equal to 55. Well, finally, we found a true statement and activity would be set to baseball. But the difference here, instead of just using simple if statements, is it wouldn't continue on because the else is only activated if the above if statement is false. Well, in this case, it's true. And therefore, we would get the desired effect of stopping.
And so once the code is stopped, it could reach the end and print, we think you should try baseball, just like we want it to. Now this code is correct, but there's actually a more common way that programmers nest if-else statements. You can see in this slide that in front of every if statement, except for the first if statement, we've written the word else. And it has the exact same effect as what we were just looking at in the prior slide. It's going to stop when we find the first true statement. And you can see that it doesn't follow the normal indention rules, but in this rare case, not following the indention rules actually makes it easier to read. The activity or the code inside of the if-else statements are indented, but the else's are not indented. And so while I called this decisions else if, what it's really doing is nesting if-else statements. So if the input was 60, we would get false, 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 and then true. And once we get that true with an else if statement, it's going to stop, which is the desired effect and it would print out, we think you should try baseball. And it would never go to basketball or skiing. One other point that I'd like to make is you should always have a catch-all or a way to say, if everything above is not true, do this. Notice I didn't pick another activity to do, but rather I simply said invalid. So if the user ever got, we think you should try invalid, we know that there's something wrong in our code above and we probably missed a range or wrote code wrong, but it gives us a good hint to know that all of our other options were used and therefore it went to the catch-all invalid. Else if statements, which are really just nested if else statements, are an excellent way to do multiple decisions because the process will stop when a conditional is evaluated to true. So like we saw in the last example, when it reached baseball, it stopped and it didn't keep on going. And finally, if you're going to use else if statements or nested if else statements, be sure to add that else at the end, because what it's doing is it's going to catch any condition you might not have thought of or coded above and say, if all else fails, do this. As was stated, else ifs are a powerful way to do multiple decisions in Java. Although the syntax is slightly different than what a programmer is used to with indention, it actually makes the code slightly easier to read and is usually preferred by programmers. And you'll see that demonstrated in others' code. If you have multiple possible ways for the user to take, else if is a good solution for a program. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click the like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.